Hey, what's up guys? This is Kevin, I'm here with my buddy Garrett. We're in Mount Bachelor. Uh, this is day two, and we're just having an awesome time riding in trees. Um, there's a bit of snow on the ground, it's making it really fun. I'm trying to do lots of side hits, checking out the park. It's been a really great time so far. And we thought on this opportunity on the chair, we would answer some of your guys' questions. And Garrett's gonna help answer them. So let's do this, you ready to go? Yeah, man. Sick. Okay, so Jonathan Erickson asks, where do you buy all your snowboard stuff? Uh, so for myself, I try to uh, buy stuff from shops um, that carry sort of the brands that I like and also where the, the people that work there are, you know, they're friendly and, and uh, helpful. So in Whistler, I like to go to Whistler uh, Showcase. It's uh, right in the village. And then in Vancouver, I shop at a place called Boardroom and they just got some cool gear and the people there have been really friendly and helpful. So those are the two places I go. Uh, personally, I'm from North Carolina, so I shop at my local shop in Boone. It's called Recess Ride Shop. Um, the people there are super friendly. They're always willing to help. Uh, they, they hook it up. If you if you buy something from the shop, they're, they're gonna fix it uh, when something goes wrong. And I think it's really important for the snowboard industry to keep it alive is to, to shop local and yeah. kind of shy away from buying things on the internet. Although it's great and it's great for price, you, you, you get more service um, yeah. when you buy locally. Yeah, support your local shop and you can build a relationship with them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so next question, Robin asks, what do you think about flow easy in bindings? Uh, so from my own experience with flows from, you know, teaching in a, in a group situation, um, flows are decent when you're just strapping up at the top of the mountain because you can quickly get your foot in there. But I've, I've seen students run into problems when you're riding in powder or on a really steep run where for whatever reason you've got, to, you've got one foot out um, and then snow gets jammed into that sort of pocket that the, the flow strap creates. Or just having to you know, roll around the snow to get into a good position to get your foot into the binding. So, there's some pros and cons. Uh, I'm not crazy on it. I would go with tr traditional, but what do you think, Garrett? Uh, personally, I, I like traditional bindings. I always have. Um, I've only had experience with flows once, and it, it wasn't a, a, a fantastic experience. Uh, with that being said, the bindings that I used were really cheap, and yeah. they were rentals, and they weren't set up properly. Yeah, you kind of get what you pay for. Yeah, exactly. So you're you're if you you know spend a lot of money on a binding, you're generally going to get a better binding from all the companies. So that's just a personal preference. If that's what you like, then go for it. Or uh, I personally like union bindings. That's uh, that's my my personal choice. Yeah, totally cool. Okay, so JP asks, how old were you when you started snowboarding? How far did you progress in the first season? Uh, so my first season, I was 14 and I was riding with my high school. And I think, you know, my, my progression the first year wasn't too much because, you know, I was going maybe twice a week for two months. And, you know, in the first couple weeks, you know, I got past the beginner stages and then I started to focus on carving and learning switch, which took another couple weeks. And then maybe I was doing like ollies and 180s by the end of the season. But I'd say I was an intermediate rider after my first season with, you know, one or two tricks under my belt. How about you? Uh, I started snowboarding when I was eight, uh, but I was only going for maybe a week to two weeks a year until I was 18. I moved to a mountain where I got to ride every day. Yeah. And riding every day is when you really start progressing. If you can get to the mountain at least a couple times a week and really work on tricks and work on your style and, and making sure you perfect the basics before you try new tricks, you're going to progress really fast. Yeah, 10,000 hour rule. Absolutely. Yeah, sweet. Okay, so Miss Minecraft, Miss Minecraft asks, can you do a video for off-season training? Uh, yeah, so for I know for a lot of you guys, 
Um, the snow resorts are closing, so you know you can start doing some off-season training. I do have a playlist with, you know, I think there's at least a dozen videos on there for some off-season training ideas, uh, where you can do different stuff with your board on, or even exercises and stretches and stuff you can do. Um, but I think the best thing is just staying active in the off-season and you know skateboarding if you can, or surfing, or picking up another board sport. Um, so I think all those are, are pretty cool ideas. Yeah, man, I just skateboard and surf, and if I get access to a boat, I go wakeboarding with a friend and uh, yeah. just try and stay stay on board. Just, yeah. you know, if you have something under you and you're standing sideways, you're, you keep thinking about snowboarding, watching snowboard videos, you're going to progress. It's yeah. half, of it's, half of it's mental as well. And, you, know, you have to visualize your tricks before you actually do it. And obviously, it's a great time to do that. Or even like me and Garrett, we've done a few summers where we've snowboarded in Whistler, yeah, Garrett's been down to Mount Hood. It's it's and if yeah, absolutely. If you can if you can snowboard in the summertime, if you can find a job in a place where they have snow and you can fall in the snow, absolutely. That's 100 percent the best thing you can do when when you snowboard year round. You get exponentially better. Yeah, definitely. Okay, awesome guys. Well, we're just about to get off the chairlift, so we'll end the Q and A there. Uh, thanks for all your questions. Um, try to get to as many questions as possible. You know, if you got anything, leave it down in the comments and maybe we'll get to another Q&A on this trip. But uh, I hope you guys are having fun out there snowboarding. I hope the resorts near, near where you guys are, are uh, still open. But, you know, be safe out there. Keep your questions coming and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks, guys. Awesome, Garrett. Later, guys.